world. My next guest is a B2B social media veteran and has been working in various social media related roles for eight years. Transparent as they come, we are diving into how not to pigeonhole yourself as a social media manager today, what good go-to-market strategies look like for social media, and how to prove your value as a social media professional and more. Please welcome Danny Peterman, brand marketing lead at Coho AI. Danny, are you ready to get radically transparent with me? Let's do it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Listen, we met on a panel together and, you know, for anyone listening, this panel was geared towards marketers and we just had a blast. And the transparency you shared on that panel, I couldn't be more enthused to have you on this show simply for that. Uh, so I want to kick off with our famous question. But Danny, as a social media professional, what is keeping you up at night professionally these days? Um, I think the future of this role um, and and the generally what what entails in the future of social media people. Um, I've seen several iterations of this role over the years. You know, in April, I'm going to be doing it for eight years. And I don't know if if there are any other roles that change so much. <laughs> because when I just started, I didn't even know it was a thing. I kind of just had this opportunity and I joined this agency to work with cust with clients. And it was something very um, wild, wild west kind of thing. Like you kind of do things and hope for the best. And even the strategies looking back are kind of ridiculous to what works and what isn't. Um, and eight years later, it's like a completely different role um, there's much more understanding of the value of it, but at the same time, um, between chat GPTs and 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 whatnot, um, you kind of don't know necessarily if it's even gonna exist in in five ten years, and even if it will, what it would look like. So to me, um, this kind of circular thing of nobody cares about it, then everybody cares about it, then money is tight, so we don't care about it again. And then it's like, it's such an unstable thing to be in. Um, and and that's to me that one of the reasons why I, I've, I've had a fairly broad experience in this industry was because I kept taking more different, like more projects, different projects, more responsibilities, so that when the day comes and you know there's more downsizing or there's who knows different priorities um i can kind of be more of a chameleon and maybe still maintain value in the organization that makes a lot of sense and i think you bring up valid points right eight years ago ten years ago social media the way we looked at it strategically is certainly not how we look at it today I would argue that it has almost become an anchor of many B2B marketing strategies. And now we're seeing terms being thrown out. I know I read recently in like a HubSpot blog, um, social brand, what is it? Social media first brands or, right? So like we do see it at the forefront right now, but I totally agree with you, right? Give it another five years. Where is it going to be? Um, right, which kind of leads me into my next question. And I'm sure you don't have all of the answers, but if you do, feel free to share, right? But the career path of a social media manager, and we can only, um, you know, hypothesize where it's going, but let's open the discussion, right? In your opinion, and, and I'm going to kind of throw it how I see it, and maybe it's not how it is, but this is kind of what I'm seeing, Right. So I'm seeing that you have a ton of social media managers, you know, go on LinkedIn, it's their time to shine, right? They, social media managers really have the, the brunt of a lot of different skill sets needed to do their job that don't always necessarily correlate under one umbrella, right? But when I look at a CMO or a VP marketing, and right, I know social media is still a new field, but when you ask a CMO, where they got their start in marketing, I see it's more in like 
lead generation or demand generation or product marketing. And I'm not hearing today so many CMOs or marketing leaders saying, oh, I got my start in social. And so I'm just curious in your opinion, right? What does a career path look like for a social media manager? And do you think you can actually make your way to CMO as one? Yes, I have a ton of things to say about that. So first, and it's kind of just to tie in the previous topic. Um, I've had this thought every once in a while because on LinkedIn, you know, there's a lot of people that's posting and they have their own personal brand and all. If it's not connected to real results, after a while, uh, you kind of burn out because if you are, and, and I've seen, I've seen gurus, the people that, you know, that are active and they know everything, they have all the answers in the world. They're not big today, when like, when, like they were eight, uh, seven, five years ago. So every once in a while, there's like this new buzzword. So, you know, and uh, growth hacker, and then there was, I don't know, now it's uh, employer branding or personal branding. Got account-based marketing in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, AD, ABM. At some point, this thing is not new anymore. People kind of know the ins and outs of it. And now nothing differentiates you anymore compared to others. Uh, that's how I see it. And that's why I never <laughs> looked at myself too seriously in in being a somebody in the industry in any way. Um, just try to do the best and, and have results. But uh, regarding your question, first of all, like you said, it's a newish industry. So um, usually VPs, CMOs are a bit on the older side, obviously, because they, they had to do a, a few things before they reached that role. Um, and if you think about it, like, the average CMO would be around 40-ish. Um, and 10 years ago, if if social media barely existed and they were around 30, they already had to have a few jobs. So they already had the chosen industry before that. So that's definitely something that there's a, like a good reason for not to see CMOs today from a social media background. But I think future talking, 100%. I'm sure people will reach those 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 roles uh maybe it's in my future as well i don't know maybe not but my current role i i took as a as a brand lead and hope like to bring to build everything brand related um and i could do that from originally doing organic social media mm -hmm. uh, and the only reason why it could happen is because i was lucky to have a several managers that saw the value of organic brand and, and just brand building yeah. when still most companies don't see the, the value in it. And you still need to teach and explain everything you do and, and explain that it's hard to track uh, the, the results and give specific metrics and all those things. And by specific managers that I had, which were great, uh, that gave me the chance. I had the opportunity to actually bring amazing results. And then it led to a new opportunity and a new opportunity. And so I think as time goes by, like even here, I joined Coho and we're a small company, like 18 people. And obviously there is no brand because the company is small and that's why they brought me in to build something. But just think about it. Like 18 people or 17 people and you bring someone to do organic brand building when the company is a startup super small that's something that a few years ago and still i think is very rare yeah so yeah. knowing that value is still rare but once people see it once it's a it's an obvious choice uh you'll have those people and they will grow and they will build and they will reach those uh topper uh positions and just one last thing about it is that when i when i in my first job i was working at an agency and i had this kind of realization one day that okay you have the ceo and and you know you you think okay the vp r d maybe will be a ceo one day or or you know maybe the cfo because there's a lot of management but i had this thing of like okay a big marketing team is what 30 people let's say 
uh, at least in my experience. One, ones we can only dream of at this stage. <laughs> yeah, of course. But like at, uh, even like at yeah. Lucia, my previous company, where it walked me when I worked, we are, we were about a thousand people yeah. and it's like 30, 40 marketing people. So potentially to be a VP marketing on, on you have pretty much 30 different roles or not even maybe 15 different roles that you can grow to be a, 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 a VP or CMO. Yeah. In, in development, there's like in like R and D teams, that's the machine. So that means there's more people there. That means there's more competition on the role. Yeah. But when the C levels sit in the room together, the the the, the VP R and D and the VP marketing are kind of on the same level. They're both making money. They're both making huge <laughs> decisions about the company. Maybe it's even better to to approach that from a marketing angle than to battle. 200 developers, all very good, all very accomplished, all have a goal, maybe not all, but a lot of them want to be team leads and directors and VPs and, 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 you know, so. So, yeah. That's not, so that's not that bad of a, of a place to start, I think. I, I would agree. I would agree on that. And I think, right, marketing, it's such a wide discipline, right? When you say you work in marketing, it's like what aspect and where, and many of those, right, you, it, you can be a generalist or you can be very focused in marketing. And when we think about that, right, there, if you're going to be a leader, you don't necessarily need to be really good at all the things you're going to be managing, but you do need to know how they work. So when I think about social media, one of the questions that I often think about, right, in, in this conversation is as you're building your career in social media management, right? So you mentioned that you started in socials and then headed over into brand. So you already started to, to kind of disclose a little bit about kind of the journey there. But how can you not pigeonhole yourself for growth in an organization if you are starting as a social media manager? Or what do you think marketing leaders should know about social media managers when it comes to perhaps promoting them out of the social media role, right? Because they're they're quite good at what they do and there's so many different skill sets needed to be a part of, you know, what goes into social. But oftentimes organizations, I think it's easy for social media managers to get pigeonholed. So how can we not do that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I think there's this thing, there's this thing in general expertise in anything, but we're talking about social. I think uh, it's like a, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect that as the more you know, the more you know that you don't know. <laughs> um, and so when I was doing social for an agency seven, eight years ago, after like six months, I thought I knew social media because, and I kind of knew, you know, I, I gave advice and I was working with customers, but then I, I went to uh, like an in-house working at WalkMe and suddenly you work with all these teams and, and, and you can dive deep into one role. And there's like, you kind of unlock new levels of expertise. And I think you were talking about pigeonholing yourself and, and be a generalist versus like an expert. I think specifically in social media, if you are an expert, you become a generalist. So Explain basically... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so social media by definition, like I can sit down, I can join a new company, dive deep into what they do, who are the personas, what what's the messaging, and start creating content on my own. And that's fine. And you can be a junior social media person that does that really well. But after a while, you want more and you want to grow your results. And by definition, to grow your results and to be better in doing social media, you have to collaborate with others. That's that's like ingrained into the role. And once you do that, you kind of become a generalist just because you work with content and you work with HR on employer branding and you work with PR and you work with creative people and you work with the uh, campaign, paid campaigns and you do some copywriting and suddenly you just, you have, all the skills of a generalist in terms of you kind of know what to do in everything, 
you can manage people in different domains because you know the the basics of of what they do because you collaborated with them but the the but while you're in the social media kind of hat you have amazing results and you are an expert and you you have those results that you that you couldn't have gotten if you just created your own content and did designs on canva and whatever like I can design my own stuff on Canva. It will be lame, but it will do the job. But once you sit down with the designer on a weekly basis and you know how to request things and you know that what they can do and can't do, and then you're like, oh, I realize I need a videographer. And now you're working with a video person. And suddenly your whole social game becomes like, it's like uh, putting steroids into your already existing strategy. But then one day you can manage a team of a social media person, a designer, and a videographer, because you work with all of them. You did kind of all those roles in a way. Um, and so I don't think it's the same in particular in other roles. Um, if you're a developer, you might learn, you know, new, uh, um, I don't know, programming languages and you work on different projects. It doesn't necessarily mean that you had a contact with the product people or that you were working on a bigger strategy. You can be a really, really good programmer without working with a ton of people. I think, maybe I'm talking out of my ass here, but, <laughs> but I think you can be like a real expert and same in a lot of ways in design, for example, like you can be a really good designer. You can create amazing things, but that's not necessarily going to take you out of your position as a designer but in social media you can't be like a great great social media person if you haven't collaborated with 30 different people I love that I think that's so valid now listen you you brought up a lot in this you know when we were speaking about this um kind of the what what success looks like what like you know getting good results so when you're looking at your social media results right and, and i i love this and hate this at the same time because when you whenever you ask right a social media manager what's your playbook or uh, what what's the best strategy there really isn't a one size fits all so can you share with us some of your go to metrics that you use to examine your own success and then how frequent do you have your eyes on those metrics is it like weekly is it monthly is it annually and then from that right like which one of those do you actually share with the executive team? Because I know I've had my seat at the uh, strategy table a few times, right? And I'll be really excited about certain social metrics and I'll share that. And I have a room of executives kind of looking at me like waiting for the explanation of how and what those things that social media managers talk about mean and how it impacts the business. Yeah, so I think in a lot of ways, as much as it's frustrating, the reality is that you can't measure brand. Um, you can have certain indicators that maybe show that your brand is stronger than it used to be. But looking at it as like a lead generation uh, um, avenue or, or I don't know, it, it doesn't, that's not the goal of it. The goal, it's not even structured that way. You work within social media platforms their goal is to create conversation, is to create a following, is to build a community. You look at leads, that beats the purpose of what the platform wants to give you. You want leads? Give me a budget, I'll run a campaign of ads and, and we'll start you know, uh, A-B testing and all these things, that's fine. Not my expertise, but that's what it's there for. You There's this thing about, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Putting a circle in a in a, a triangle peg or whatever, something like an American expression. <laughs> but it doesn't fit. Like it doesn't fit. You're trying to 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 put a strategy uh, on tools that aren't meant for that. And so once you realize that, and like I said, I'm lucky to have uh, uh, that I had some managers that understood that, and they didn't expect me to bring leads. Uh, then you're like, okay, if the purpose is to build a community, let's say, in my mind, it was followers on the LinkedIn page, for example, then great. Then the metric is to build, uh, to grow uh, followers. 
Um, so and- what, like if we, like, let's just, cause that, I think that's a very fair metric and many of us social professionals, we look right. Like we want to grow our LinkedIn presence. We want to grow our followers, but like, does it mean it's successful if you get like one follower a month, 10 followers a month, 50,000 followers a month? Like what, what's successful? Cause I know when you look at brand, right. You often look at like, let's say brand lift. And so if you already have a brand that's pretty well known, right. Maybe going from like zero to hundred is not something you're going to see every day. Right. But in, in like a startup case, you know, it might be much easier to get that zero to a hundred followers, let's say, but in a well-known brand, a larger brand, it may not happen as quickly, but it's happening. So how do you, when you sit and you kind of determine what success is going to look like month over month, how do you define that? Or like, how do you pick your numbers? Yeah. So, so kind of continuing the previous question that you asked in terms of, uh, uh, if I look at it on a regular basis or not. So first of all, I don't like, not really, uh, my goal as a social media person or now as a brand person that also does social because the team is small is to first, I see this role as a project management role. So I look at initiatives, cadences, uh, different projects, different collaborations. Um, and the if I do it right, the results are kind of got, just gonna be there. I, I have faith in the process. So if I'm starting and I did that at Lucia and I'm looking at doing the same thing here now at Coho, um, I start with, let's start posting once a week. Let's see how long it takes me. Let's see how much uh, uh, resources uh, it takes me. Um, do I do it on my own? Do I use the designer? If I use the designer, how many hours can he give me uh, from his time? So we figure that out. Then we see, we just had that process at, at Lucia almost three years ago. Fairly quickly, like I wrapped up from zero posts that I just came in, I needed to learn everything. Within a month, we were posting three times a week, okay? Um, and two posts were just text and one post was with the designer because that's what he could give me back then. By the time I, I left Lucia, we were posting four times a week. So just one more time a week. But one post was like a highly creative something. One was designed. One was like this, uh, maybe an insight that I researched a long time. So it's not necessarily how many times you post. It's the value that you bring and how impactful it is and all these things. So um, once it, like things kind of, there's a cadence, things are running there's a, an order to it. There's a schedule to the post. You know how many po- how many times you're going to post this week, this month. You have certain uh, um, anchors to, okay, I'm going to post a post on New Year's. And then I'm going to have a, a major PR announcement. Uh, then I'm going to post that. So you have all these things. It frees up so much time in your mind and in your day mm-hmm. to actually think broadly. Like, okay, now that I have those, what can I do more creatively? Or how can I start a project of collaboration with a different company? Or, you know, all these things. And so once you have that kind of going, then you're going to see the results fairly quickly. Not necessarily amazing results, but you're going to see what the results are. Yeah. So you're going to see after a month, okay, I've posted three times, I posted twice a week and I've had... 15 followers a week during that month. Okay, that's the benchmark. Yeah. Now the goal is just to do better. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> like, I don't have this thing about coming in and saying, by the end of the year, we're going to have 50,000 followers. And uh, here's all the steps I'm going to get. I have no idea. Organic is a black hole of not knowing what I'm going to do and what the results are going to be. The only thing I can do that I have full control of is the cadence of posting and the amount of research I'm, I'm, I'm doing for each post. And then based on the results, the goal is just to do better. I love uh, so, so you can, like on a small startup, there's, there's no followers, you're coming in and there's 200 followers. I can't tell you that in, in six months, I'm going to have 5,000 followers. I have no idea if I'm going to get there. 
I can tell you that I'm going to start posting every week. I can tell you that once I see the results, I'm going to do everything I can to do better. Mm -hmm. And for CMOs or, or, t or marketing team leaders or even CEOs, that should be enough when you're hiring a social media manager. You just, you can expect them to do more. They can tell you that they will reach specific results, but it's just lies. <laughs> like, let's be honest. <laughs> Nobody knows. It's all fluff. Right. Yeah. It's kind of challenging when you're working against an algorithm that you don't know exactly how it works. Exactly. Right? So <laughs> you never and, and know. I've, I've, I've built strategies. I've looked at data. I remember one particular thing that I had um, years ago, 2017. Uh, I've Sorry, 2018. Uh, or one of those years. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Before this, this, COVID. This <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was years before COVID, but it was kind of like, okay, we need to figure out a strategy for Facebook. And uh, I I did a ton of research, like I did like Excel sheets about all my posts and how many people saw them, again, organically, which now is like an obvious thing not to do. <laughs> but we kind of tried to find what the algorithm likes or doesn't like. And then it was like January 1st, I think, I think, uh, 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 2019 uh, Zuckerberg comes out we're going full blast on video <laughs> pretty much like everything you knew about Facebook doesn't matter anymore and I was like I was in weeks in mapping all my content which literally didn't mean anything the next day because now video was a thing and we didn't even have a camera we didn't have a video strategy no one was doing video back then <laughs> suddenly it was the that thing that I have to do now so you can fight the algorithms all you want, but they change so quickly that, you know. So listen, I have two more questions for you. And and I think you bring up so many valid, I'm smiling because a social media manager, right? You, you can uh, plan your whole strategy, right? Like one does in 2019, right before 2020, I had the whole year planned and then, you know, COVID hit. So we had to completely revamp. So I'm just smiling because I can, I feel that frustration. Like I can feel the pride of once you feel you figured it out and you put together something beautiful and then, you know. <laughs> and even now, of course. And it's kind of, uh, super relevant now, like for the past year, I've been hearing the entire world talking about TikTok. You have to do TikToks. TikToks is the next big thing. So much organic reach. What happens the day the U.S. government decides to block it in the U.S. for whatever <laughs> political reasons? What then? Like you just built the entire team, you bought the equipment, you have these scripts. What do you do then? And suddenly you're like, oh, I guess I should have invested in my LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook account. Like, so, so, so basically what you're saying is we need to make sure that to some degree we diversify uh, our community like stocks. Yeah, <laughs> just like just stocks. Like diversify <laughs> your portfolio. And even within the platform, you need to diversify the type of content and the type the topics and the like the actual format of the post. Because for a while, uh um just text works great, and then there's video. So then you invest in video, and then suddenly uh uh polls do great on LinkedIn. But then people start posting five posts, five polls a week, and it's crazy. <laughs> and everybody's sped up with the polls. And so it constantly changes. So my whole thing was always like, why like be so much on this thing? Even if something works, I post it not more than once a week in that format. Mm -hmm. So my content will always gonna be text post, an image, an infographic, a poll, a video, a PDF, an interview a PR, like it has to be diversified. And then, yeah, sometimes this works better. Sometimes other things work better, but you don't go crazy when the boat, you know, starts uh, uh, tilting. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of good. I'll just lean more into these things that kind of work a bit better. I love that. And it goes back to what you said before, right? It's really about understanding and putting forth a strong cadence to stick to. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's spot on. So as we wrap up, I want to ask you, right? And, and we've definitely, I think there's a lot CEOs could learn from listening to this interview when it comes to social, right? It's not so black and white. It's very gray. It's very impactful. It's very powerful when done right. But a lot of us behind the scenes 
you know, we have our pulses on the trends and what's working, what's not, but we're always needing to shift. What's one thing you wish CEOs knew about social media that you feel in 2023 that they may not be there yet or they don't quite know yet? I feel like um, the impact that they could have personally um, as in terms of being a tool for the marketing and social media people. Um, so that means writing themselves uh, content on LinkedIn, for example, um, being more involved in PR, which is a lot of in a lot of ways connected to social, mm -hmm. uh, but also how much power they have in um, kind of sending that message of, of involvement and helping marketing to the entire organization. So if you don't prioritize, prioritize it, the entire organization won't prioritize it either. You'll have spots of like a person here and person there that kind of collaborates. But if the CEO is being interviewed a lot and if they're writing their own content, now some of the C-levels are like, maybe we should be active too. Maybe we also have something to say. And I really believe that it trickles down to the entire organization. And I had something else, but 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 that's that's kind of the thing. I, I think, oh, I, I remember that we're in, a, in an age of, of CEOs a lot of times being even more um, brand associated than the actual brand. So, mm -hmm. Now, uh, like, you know, everybody's talking about Elon Musk, but and and like him or hate him, the fact is that Tesla doesn't have a marketing department. He is their marketing department in a lot of ways. So it's like, that's, you know, that's the power of it. And in general, like we're talking about Zuckerberg, we're talking about Jeff Bezos, we're talking about uh, whoever, but a lot of these companies, the CEO is the face of the company uh, and their involvement and recognition of it uh can bring a lot of opportunities to the company and again and for themselves you yeah. know yeah and also you know, ceos brand. have this ceos have this fear that i'm gonna build someone up and then they're gonna leave with their brand you know built uh to a different company okay you're the co-founder you're the ceo you're not going anywhere then build your own you know like you no. are the most stable thing within the organization just by being there then let's build you up. And I feel like a lot of social media, it's like having, it's like uh, winning the lottery. If you have a CEO that's willing to write content and be involved, it's it's really helpful. I love that. Um, I love that. And I couldn't agree more with you that it's so important for CEOs and C-levels to be active on social, uh, not to be afraid of it, but to really lean into it. My last question for you, it's my favorite question of the show when you Google yourself or as I did, um, you know, went on LinkedIn and have, there's a lot you are, I mean, anyone listening, you need to follow Danny, especially if you're in the social space, if you're a marketer, you have quite the following on LinkedIn, you create these authentic posts that resonate so deeply with so many marketers. So I can learn, and I know you're very open on LinkedIn, right? So this is going to be a, a tough question, but what's one thing you can share about yourself that we actually can't know or find out about you from Googling you or from looking on LinkedIn? Um, so for, <laughs> from an authentic, this is a, a podcast about authenticity, but I think my political views, uh, not that they're radical in any way, at least I don't think so. Uh, but I think that panel that we were on kind of alluded a little bit to uh, certain ideas that maybe people don't agree with. Um, I tend to keep them for Facebook. Uh, and so if not... we want political, Danny, are you suggesting we find you on Facebook? You can find, no, I'm not afraid of my political uh, uh, opinions and to say them out loud. I just think that uh, I love LinkedIn. I love Facebook. I think they just have different uh, purposes. And on LinkedIn, I have no reason to share a political agenda because that's not what LinkedIn is about in my mind. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm there to talk about work and the work experience and yeah, life outside of work as well, but still as it connects to the work experience. And so if you dig a little bit, if you add me on Facebook or whatever, you'll see, but I'm not, I don't, I don't, you know, I have a, a I feel like a good, um, I'm pretty good at uh, uh, leaving it aside. And also with the people I work with, I have no, I, I don't care what you believe in. I don't care uh, uh, where you stand politically, uh, right or left or whatever. Uh, if you're pleasant to work with and you 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 get results, and then I will enjoy your company. And I'm not looking to fight just for the sake of it. So uh, that's something that bothers me on LinkedIn these days. I feel like it's kind of tainted in a lot of ways with everybody feeling like they have to change the world and their opinion about a certain political issue uh, is the most important thing. Um, I don't like it, so I don't share it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of posts that I'm like, oh, I have to comment on this one. And I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not the place. Um, you know, just you. People, I feel like people think they're more important than they really are. And that their opinion is more valid for some reason. Uh, I'm aware that mine is just one of of eight billion, uh, and so I just keep it to myself uh, in the places that it's not necessarily to to share it. Danny, I look forward to now following you on Facebook because you have me intrigued. Uh, but, I will, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say thank you so much for getting radically transparent with me today around the role and the world of social media. And I look forward to future collaboration. Thank you. It was uh, really fun. Thanks for tuning in to the Radically Transparent podcast brought to you by Octopost, the only social media management and employee advocacy platform architected for B2B. I'm Jennifer Gutman, your host and director of social strategy here at Octopost. And if you love today's show, we'd love if you subscribe, rate, and give a raving review wherever you get your podcasts. For more discussion on B2B social media marketing, be sure to follow Octopost on LinkedIn. And of course, to gain access to all our free social media marketing and employee advocacy resources, head on over to our website, www.octopost.com. Until next time.